Welcome back everybody, this is Lois back with another video on the channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about Django with Postgres. When you are writing a Django application, you're going to need a database and the recommended database by Django community is Postgres. Now you could actually install Postgres locally and then connect to that through Django. But in this video I'm going to be showing you the best practices that you can follow to actually work with the database. And I'm gonna give you a quick tool overview, which is PyCharm IDE, how you can use that to actually make your development much faster. So here I've got this project open here in PyCharm, it's a Django project, and I would like to show you how you can use a Postgres here. So right here, you can see there is a database uh, tab here. I just click on that and it shows me all the database that I'm connected to. Now you're gonna need a professional version of PyCharm. It only works in professional version. So there's a version of PyCharm. Here's a JetBrains toolbox. So there's a version community one, which does not have this facility. But we'll talk about this. So first of all, how do we run Postgres in a database? You could install Postgres locally and run it. But I would recommend not to do that because if you have a Mac or if you don't have a stronger Windows PC, it's gonna use your resources for your CPU or RAM. So the proper way for me to do that is use Amazon uh, to actually host the Postgres server. And Amazon provide a free uh, service which can be used just for development purposes. So when you're developing, you don't really need to pay anything to Amazon to do that. So we'll talk about Amazon in this video. We're going to talk about the Postgres and setting up a Django with Postgres and also how to use PyCharm with, you know, databases. Now PyCharm is great. Like, you know, you don't really need to install PG for admin for Postgres. So first of all, let's take a look at how we can create uh, a Postgres server on Amazon. So first of all, you're gonna go to this website, aws.amazon.com, click on sign into console. If you have an account, if you don't, then go ahead and create that account. And after that, you're gonna get to this Amazon management console. You're gonna tap on or click on services and go to database section and click on RDS. Once you click on RDS, then you can create a new instance of your DB. So I'm going to click on this DB instances. And here I have one clock in uh, DB instances running. Engine is PostgreSQL, regions in Australia, and it's just like our instance. Okay. So what we can do is create a new one. So I'm just going to click on create. And here you can use other uh, databases as well like MySQL or MariaDB. So I'm just going to be focusing on Postgres. So let's select that. Here is the version for the Postgres and now you have three things here. Production, dev slash test and free tier. So when you're developing, you're going to make sure that you select this free tier because it's basically free and you can use it and a lot of uh, resources that are provided here are enough for your development purposes. Now in the settings section, I'm just going to change this name to let's just say clock in dash one and then the master username that will be used to connect to it and then the password for that. Now one important settings that you might forget, uh, which will basically stop you to connect to this database. If you go to down here, connectivity section and click on additional connectivity configuration, you're gonna have to, you know, check uh, this radio button says publicly accessible so when you're developing you you know like trying to access it from your local computer you're going to have to give it you know publicly accessible or you can you're going to need to you know create your own security groups which is like advanced stuff that i'm not going to cover in this video so you can basically say hey add these ips so if you get a request from these ips then you allow uh, the connection, the incoming connection. Okay. So if I say yes, anyone with these credentials can connect to this database. Then you can change the port, but I will recommend leave that default port. 
and here you have some database authentication settings for example if you want to authenticate with IAM database authentication this is more like advanced Amazon web services uh, you know configuration you're gonna create a new account or add roles and stuff that's not what I'm gonna I want to talk about in this video so you can just say password authentication and then click on create database so once you do that I'm just gonna go back and instead of just clicking on create database I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna show you here now here you will have a you know database instance running and you have some you know configuration here basically if you click on the database once that's get created you can see an endpoint a port okay and you're gonna have to memorize or remember those credentials that you typed in okay you have an inbound connection set to you know 00.0 .0 slash 0 that means that it accepts any kind of connection we have a db instance it says clock in now this is what you do to set up your postgres database now how do we connect that to your Django project now a lot of times uh, people will just go into the settings.py file and in the databases you just have a default and then the configuration here but I've done a little bit different here so here you can see I've got a separate class called a database and then it returns a function it has a function or method you can call it get databases so now sometimes I want to use SQLite and sometimes I want to use Postgres or maybe I want to use MariaDB or even MongoDB okay to, to do that it's just very uh, very annoying to actually go and comment some part of this configuration out and then enable others so to fix this what I've done is I'll show you something utilities and then you have here a database file I think it's not here but it's in the API so that's the database file now within this database file is just have this uh, get database and I've got two variables prod SQLite and AWS and these are all the configuration here uh, so get your own uh, configuration and then you can set up the database like this okay um, so that's about it for the configuration in the package.json not package.json file I'm talking angular here well it's requirement.tx file here you're gonna have to install PyCop2 and PyCop2 binary okay so these two packages that need to be installed with your Python pip uh, okay that's my configuration here and once you've done that when you start your server it's gonna connect to that database so I'm just gonna click on this debugger and it will connect and start my server now how do we use a PyCharm to actually utilize uh, the database now a lot of times you're gonna have to install pg4 admin so I'm just gonna go to pg4 admin uh, download page now this is not very intuitive I don't like it at all so instead what I recommend is getting this PyCharm professional well let me tell you this is not a sponsor video it's just my personal preference there's so much that this IDE or overall JetBrains IDE provides you so I'm gonna click on this database and I'm gonna click on this plus button and then here I've got this uh, data sources and these are the databases that I can connect to okay so I'm gonna click on same database right click and say open console now this console file is basically a file where you can do a queries to your database I'm actually going to get rid of this let's save this file and let's click on this play button and there you go at the bottom you can see it made a query and then it returned all the users right now it didn't return anything uh, the reason for that is because there's no data in it it's a freshly created database I'm just gonna try refreshing it nothing in there as well so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a Python manage load data command and I'm gonna use this default underscore data there is a fixture here that I've got let me just find that okay the file name is default data.json and it's gonna just go ahead and then you know upload this data there so it says 13 uploaded that's all good now we're gonna go and create a super user so I'll type a shortcut key with my alias setup 
you could actually write a script within your Django development. So if you're using Linux or Mac, you can do, you know, shortcuts here. As you can see, I've got these shortcuts created already. So instead of typing the whole big command, I can just type aliases and then I can say CSU. And it's going to ask for name. I'm going to type admin password. I'm going to give it some password here. And then I'm going to go and make a query here. And this time you can see I've got this, you know, coming back. Now, in terms of database and PyCharm, you have a full access to your database. You can see all the tables here. I can right click on this and I can even create a kind of like a diagram there as well. So I'm just going to right click here and I can actually dump data or import data from a file and I can create tables. It's pretty much everything is there. So I'm just going to right click on this and I'm going to try clicking here and then clicking on this diagram. And then I'm going to try creating a diagram there. So let's just say show visualization. Now you can see that PyCharm actually created this. Uh, let me just zoom in a bit and I'm going to put everything down. And there you go. So this is like a full ERD created with PyCharm. As you can see, how easy is this? So I'm just going to try zooming in so we can see it actually, you know, shows the relation between tables as well. I'm going to close this diagram and we are in console now. I can do a QC here to the database. Now there's a lot more that I could cover. Basically, you're going to have to explore this. My our reason of creating this video is basically giving you uh, just an overview what this PyCharm can do for you. It has a lots and lots of feature guys exporting, importing, doing queries, saving queries, and you can just convert your database automatically to some kind of like SQL file, CSV file. There's a lot of options available here. So just go and explore these. There's a lot of things that you can do with PyCharm. Okay. So yeah, I hope you liked the video. If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let me know if you have any suggestion for PyCharm or overall JetBrains in the comments below. And yeah, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.